Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the FTD Virtual Design Show titled Good Bones, The Mechanics of Design, featuring Ann Jordan, AIFD. As a quick housekeeping note, Ann will be taking questions during the session. If you have a question, simply type it in the question box on the upper right side of your screen. In addition, there's a document in the handout section on that upper right side of your screen that you can download at any time during this session. It's the current FTD Flower Exchange order form for the Labor Saver bouquets that are available for purchase all year long. Anne will be mentioning these bouquets during your presentation. Okay, let's get started. Welcome, Anne. Hey, hello, everybody. And welcome to my home. I'm in Maine. I've broadcast so many times for FTD from hotel rooms to Florida, where I, I go in the wintertime. But now you are welcome in my home. So I'm glad to be here. And I want to thank FTD for their continued support for education for Florist. And uh, this, this program has uh, two kind of facets to it. Mechanics of design are the, the bone structure the solid foundation that we need to create really professional work. I'll share some tips with you. And even if you're new, you might learn something, you might learn a lot, but if you've been around like I have, I think I've got a few tricks for you that maybe you haven't seen before, things I can share with you. So stay tuned to the end because there's a really funky one coming up. But the mechanics of design are so crucial because like anything, uh, there's that TV show called Good Bones. They're looking for homes where the structure is solid because they know as long as those the structural soundness of that building are, are there, that they're going to be able to remodel that home and have a great result. Same thing with what we do. We have to really know the techniques. All along my mantle here behind me are a lot of the things that I use. Some of them you would use too. Lots of the wires and the bullions. But there's, um, there's a few things that maybe you don't always use that I use a lot. And one is duct tape. There's a lot of duct tape. And also, if anybody's from the crafting world like I am, washi tape. You know the washi tape? Washi tape feels a lot like um, massage tape. And that's what I use. So I want to show you a few tricks with that. Um, another thing that uh, isn't in the FTD excuse me, the AISD terms book, this is the older edition, is um, <clears throat> is the use of moss. And I think moss is a wonderful technique. We use it all the time with our plants, but we tuck it into fresh arrangements sometimes too. And so there's a great list of all the things that we do in this book. And if you don't have this book, it's wonderful to have in your shop so that um, your staff can refer to it and make sure that they're using the proper terms. The other thing that I do is I'm really particular about care and handling. This isn't a care and handling clinic, but I do want to share with you something that I do. I keep my tools really clean. If, you, if you've gone to a barber shop or maybe had your nails done, they throw all their things to be cleaned in a jar like this. I think it's really for straws, but this is what I throw my tools in at the end of the day. So it's a good little idea too. And the other side of it is color. So color is an element of design. So we're gonna work all these wonderful techniques in, and then we're also gonna talk about color. So first of all, I wanna start with one of the very basic things, and that's a mechanic that we all use, which is floral foam. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite things, these design rings, because it has the tray at the bottom, so you have a wonderful water source. That's really important to me. And so this is a great Oasis product. And of course, these cages, I use these all the time. So I'm very particular about the way I want foam put down in a container. You look at just the mechanics of this liner. Of course, this is FTD pre preparing a container for us. And so it's a heavy gauge plastic. And it also has the lip over. I'm always looking for this fit. And of course, because it's prepared to us for us by FTD, it's prepared that way already. This little container, um, the white FTD container, holds two thirds of a brick of foam. And I have the foam already soaked. Remember, never to push the foam down into the water. If you're gonna use foam, maybe start soaking it first thing in the morning or even the night before. But one thing that I do is I notch my foam 
in, in four places. I want to show you what I do. Notch, notch. This is so that clients can find a way to get water into this, the longevity. See how that looks? Now, when I put that down in there, if I were to water this, look at how many places this client can water this, this four little notches. The other thing that's really important to do with foam, and for a couple of different reasons, is to then bevel the edge. See how I'm dragging my knife right around the corner like that? And I'm beveling it. The reason why is because the once it's beveled, a nice fresh cut is gonna let you put your, your flowers in a lot easier. And then also, once it's beveled, I can guarantee you, you will use a lot less foliage than if the, the, the foam was all the way to the outside of that uh, liner. And so here we have a great way to add water, and then we're gonna use a nice beveled edge so that we can put our um, flowers and foliages in easier, and then also use less of it. And uh, I always say, and you'll hear me anytime I work with uh, anybody, that money is either made or lost on the design bench. And this one tip, I bet, will save your flower shop a lot of money. So this is one that I've already prepared. It's a little bit larger. I've already notched it. I've already beveled the edge and I'm adding birch. I'm from Maine and so I tend to forage. Why wouldn't I? All this stuff is just right out my front door and birch is a signature for me too. Anybody who knows me knows that I believe in branding and that's part of my brand. So the, tip, the tip that I wanna show you is these Koei picks. I don't think they're made by Koei anymore, but I still call them that. I'm gonna take two Koei picks and take that copper wire and I'm gonna band it to this side and I'm gonna band it to that side because these wood sticks are square. So when they go into the foam, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna spin around? Nope. Once the wood absorbs water, it's gonna stay nice and tight. So how did I secure, look how secure this one is. This one needs one more little addition and watch. Pop that right down there. And I'm not even gonna cover that copper wire because I think it's beautiful adding that copper wire. Uh, banding is something that I love to do in design. I've banded this with yarn and wire in a couple of different places. And so look at those nice sound mechanics. The way to water, and now I'm gonna get going on this arrangement. So the birch, this is again something that I, I just found in my yard. Uh, a little windstorm is all it takes to send this stuff every which way. And so I'm gonna add the birch. I've cut that at an angle, and there I have a nice line started. Um, I like little woodland things too. So what this is, is a, a broadleaf foliage. I uh, uh, just picked that. I think it's probably um, from a, um, I think it's azalea or rhododendron. They've stopped blooming, so it's one or the other. But anyway, what I do is I make sure that both stems of the baby's breath and the foliage are going to reach that well of water. So there you see both stems there. And here's a little thing that might be growing in the woods. So it's a simulated, right? And I like to cluster. So here's a little baby's breath. I love baby's breath, but we need to find new ways to use it. So there's a little cluster of those little guys tucked in like so. And then Dusty Miller, I love, and that's gonna look so beautiful with my box, my gray box, my gray foliage. I grow a lot of this. I grow a lot of Dusty Miller in my garden so that I can, I think it's gonna be too big, I'm gonna pull it apart a little bit, uh, so that I can do just this. Now, when I'm placing this into the foam, you can see I'm pushing that down so that I'm gonna to get to that well of water. I know I have water level right about to here. And it's important for me to make sure that everything that I place into this foam is gonna reach that well of water. Longevity of flowers is one of the most important things you can, you can do for your um, customers is to make sure that your flowers are long lived. Now, for this arrangement, 
I'm going to start with the color orange. So here I have these lovely roses. And I like things kind of asymmetrical and loose. See how far down I'm going into that foam as far as I can to reach that well of water. So I'm going to use a cluster of three here. Look how far I can go down into that foam and it feels just perfect. And then I'm going to take one and I'll pop it right down here. See that nice line that just got created? It's wonderful, huh? Now the stock. Nice orange, peachy orange. Cluster again. Nice grouping. Way down into that bone. If you're not shoving these big shoving, that's probably not a design term, right? If you're not putting these uh, insertions really deep into that foam, then you're not going to get to that well of water and have the longevity that you need. Look at this hypericum. It's huge. And we've got to go back to the beginning. Yeah. yeah. You, were you were leaving your tools. Somebody was asking, um, you were talking about leaving your tools in that liquid. Does that cause your tools to rust? No, I don't leave them in that long. I don't leave them in overnight. I used to, uh, uh, you can oil them, and I do that quite frequently too, oil my tools around, uh, particularly pruners, and then um, you don't have any problem with that. I used to just use a vat of soapy water and bleach and throw my tools in there when I was cleaning up at the end of the night, and then I would take them off, clean them, and put them back on my towel. So I don't leave them in overnight, and then you always add a little lubricant to, like the nuts and bolts of your tools in here. I've never had anything rust on me. Clean Great. tools are so important because if you have dirty tools and the first thing that flower gets after you know sitting in a case or not even being processed yet is a dirty knife or a dirty pruner, what do you think the first thing that that flower is going to draw up for nutrition? Not much of anything very helpful, right? All right, so here's my monochromatic color harmony so we have another the... go ahead janet um tom is wondering what you suggest or how do you suggest charging um for your forged items i know sometimes well that's... thank you very good question i do charge for them and i equate it to whatever i can find at the wholesale house so if you use knut nielsen if you use schusters of texas if they have dried products and branches and all of that sort of thing at your wholesale house, I equate it to that and I add a similar charge. So if I'm using birch, and I do use a lot of birch, when I had my retail operation to get through uh, the summer with all the birch I needed, I could cut down up to 30 birch trees to use the birch. It was a signature look for me, but they're everywhere around here. It's New England. And so for me, from the birch poles, to the birch branches, I would equate it to what I would get. Normally, I would equate it to something from Knut Nielsen. But absolutely, you're going to charge. It takes time to forage. And if you do that, if you are doing things like that, not only does it take time, but you're being smart, right? It's there. And if it blends in with your signature look, there you go. All right, so here is my first arrangement. Great question, thank you. I love questions about pricing and I don't shy away from it at all because making money in the flower shop, you know, you can really have this great hobby of being a, you know, an arranger, a flower arranger, but if you're not making out any money, that goes away really quick. You're not happy anymore because you can't pay bills. And so any questions about pricing or making money, uh, that's, that's, cool. that's what I love to talk about. I wanted to put some more branches in here. Again, branding, always branding, my signature look. There's some more birch branches that I would absolutely charge for. So what do you think? Monochromatic, tints, tones, and shades of one color. So from the very beautiful dark orange to these beautiful pastel colors, adding uh, a little bit of uh, pink on this side, a little bit, a little bit of blush on this one. So I add white and you get this wonderful uh, tint, the pastel, the box was gray. So if the box is gray, something in the arrangement has to be gray because that's how you add unity. 
And so there's the first one, monochromatic tones and shades of, oh, what was the shade? Oh, the branch, the red branches. Okay, that's range number one. Now, the mechanic in itself could be selecting the right base. And so if you have, I love vintage. And so I collect these old fashioned flower frogs like this, that you would put down into a container like that. And you could arrange right in uh, these, these holes. It's called a Kanzan. A lot of times if you pick these up in antique shops, they would call them a flower frog. We know our term and terminology, so we'd call it a Kanzan. And then this is a vintage container and I found a pink flower frog and that would just fit right into that lovely little container. It's pink and so the pink shines through. It's a great way to show, um, to show some interest. If you're teaching floral design, why not introduce them to things like this? I love that. Another one, and I'm gonna deconstruct this one. So this is also a Kanzan. It's um, little needles. Uh, like a pin cushion that's deep down into this sweet little ceramic dish. I found this in a thrift shop and I used to sell these in my flower shop. And so the mechanics of this, this branch, see how secure that is? It's because of tension. I put the branches so close together that this isn't going anywhere and see the nice little line that that adds. So here, this one, I'm gonna deconstruct, but let's talk about it for a little bit first. Containers blue red and yellow. So on the color wheel, those are our primary colors. And so this is a triadic color harmony. And the mechanics of this would be the Kanzan. It's the, uh, that's called a frog too, but it's a pincushion frog. So here's, let's deconstruct it. This is, I've had this in here for over a week and it's a begonia leaf. Look at that thing. Talk about Fibonacci and the spiral. Isn't that beautiful? And so that's just placed down into that um, pin. Uh, the calla lilies, look, I'm pulling them out. That's how secure they are in that pin. See, that great mechanics, calla lilies. And look at the spacing here with the beautiful freesia. I think we don't use freesia enough. I love freesia. I love anything that's gonna give me these cool lines. And then this is pavifolia and it's, um, what's going bad, it was from a wedding that my daughter did a week ago and you know how it does, the tips get all nasty. Well, one side of this is red, the other side is green. So to add red into my tri, tri harmony here, I use the red side. And now this branch comes out. So this is a deconstruct. Look, I'm pulling, this is how hard I'm pulling. That's how wonderful this mechanic is. And now if you look down in this container, you can see the flower pin right there. Yeah, I used to sell these and I don't remember the source of them, but um, there's the frog and this beautiful ceramic container. I was thrilled to be able to find this in a thrift shop. So that's a de deconstruct of something, a little bit of an Ichabonic style. But if you want a real showstopper, that's the kind of style to do. You're gonna use four flowers and a little bit of cut foliage. Really, that's a wonderful thing uh, to show people how to really make a sleek arrangement and um, have it super. Yeah. Question. Yes. For um, um, they were asking, what is the name of the book that you showed at the beginning? Thank you. This book is out of print. There is a new one. Uh, and this is from AIFD. So you would go to AIFD, American Institute of Floral Designers. You go to their website and, and order this book. It's, it's wonderful. It has all the elements and principles, all the techniques all the term and terminology that we use. And the new super improved one was just published a year ago and it's a hot seller. So for this book, you wanna to go to AIFD.org and that's where you'll find this. It's you know one of the things that uh, I always use to train employees because we would take a section at a time. I took training staff very seriously and I wanted them to use the term and terminologies as I did and with the customers. And we always taught floral design in the flower shop too and people would just wear this book out. And so this is probably not the edition that you're going to get. You're gonna get the new super improved one. Thank you for asking, that's a great question. 
Okay, so here's um, a little blue container, uh, compote. I love the shape of a compote. And for this mechanic, I've taped the grid on the top. Anybody do that, right? And especially for this type of a vessel, it's it's clear. It, so we don't really want to add foam to this. Maybe black foam wouldn't be so bad, but I really didn't want to. I wanted a lighter look, so I didn't want to add foam. Well, for something that's shallow like this, right? How are you going to secure those flowers without foam? So one way to do it would be to tape this grid on the top. Mm, it's got water in it, so I can't tilt it too much. It's my living room. Anyway, taped it one, two, three, one, two, three. And then I band it also all the way around it because if you just go across both ways, sometimes it's not going to hold. Other choices would be, you know what I'm gonna say, birch. This is what I always had in the flower shop is lots and lots of birch. And this is why we would cut down so many trees because all I would do is take this birch, it's nice and fresh, and I would just tie these knots like that, just like that, and then keep adding to it, weave it through. Maybe I could just leave it just like that too. But look, you make it like a little wreath, it's called an armature. And I would sit that right on the top of the container and I would arrange in that. Now on a shallow one like this, probably I would run one piece of tape off uh, across the top to secure that while I'm designing. Also, this is um, the rustic wire from Smithers Oasis, love this stuff. And you want to price this too by the yard. So it tells you how many feet are on here, 70 feet. And so for this little armature, I used two yards. So I would know and my staff would know and have a source to find out how much this is by the yard. So two yards with this, here's another option. I could just lay that on the top and arrange in either one of these things. If all I'm doing is creating a grid system, then anything at all that's going to be able to do this for me is going to allow me to arrange my flowers. And so I don't know which one I might use. I think I'm going, I think I'm digging this one. So I'm going to set that on there. And again, for my mechanic to stick, I have two going on here because I did already uh, tape that. So I am just going to do one little because it's short, such a short little container. So far for our colors, we've made a monochromatic arrangement, tints, tones, and shades of one color, it was orange. We've made a, a triadic color, or we deconstructed a triadic color harmony. Now I'm going to take my color wheel, and here's my orange, here's orange, and I'm going to go right across on the color wheel and find blue. And I'm gonna use, try to use tints, tones, and shades of all of it. Tint is add white. Tone is add gray, shade is add black. Love the color wheel. Make sure your staff all has color wheels in their, everybody has color wheels in their uh, toolbox. All right, so now this is a beautiful container. So I have, here's my, my colors. I have Tweedia, uh, I have uh, Erygium, the beautiful roses, and look at the ranunculus. Aren't they beautiful? So let's let's try out my mechanics and see how I'm doing. I am going to start with a thistle. So I'm going to place my thistle all around, and I want a loose, loose, loose feeling. Now, this one, I'm going to use this as part of a mechanic itself. So see how all these laterals are shooting off? If I put this right down in there, now I can arrange in those sticks as well, those laterals. I love the denim look. Now look how beautiful this is with this container. This container is something I found at a thrift shop. I love going thrift shopping and I can always find so many things that I can use for my garden club shows, and I still do flowers here and there for people, and I'm always finding lovely, lovely containers. Okay, that's kind of an evenly distributed look, which isn't my style at all. I like groupings because I think that groupings, like mechanics are pretty good though, aren't they? 
my, I, I like groupings because I think it's very, very effective uh, to really showcase flowers. So look how these roses, once they're grouped, just look so fabulous. I'm putting them nice and tight so I have a little bit more, um, I have a little bit of depth going on. The Tweedia, very sweet. I want this to be a little bit more blue than orange this time. And so the Tweedia I'm placing just randomly and just loosely. Has a really natural flow. See my mechanics? I can even go nice and long out the side. See, everything is staying so beautifully, isn't it? So I have the taped grid and I have the armature going on here. But I still love a crescent. I mean, I learned years ago to make a crescent arrangement. So it's a little bit reminiscent of that, isn't it? I don't know when to put my foliage in first. Um, I do have this beautiful foliage from my garden. It's um, a Hercura, which is uh, coral bells. So look at this for contrast. Is that not yummy? Holds up pretty good. It holds up pretty good. I had all kinds of it till this morning. The deer got it. Look at the contrast. Watch what happens to that beautiful pastel when I add that. Now look at these. One of my favorite flowers is ranunculus. I think it's because I always like buttercups as a kid and it's a derivative of that, I believe. So let's see. What do you think? What about my mechanics? Ranging in my sticks. It's a signature look for me. Look, feel that. God, it's staying nice and tight. I'm thrilled. I'm happy. Some more ranunculus. Let them just droop and do what they do. Sweet and romantic looking, isn't it? I'm getting a lot in this shallow, shallow vase. I don't mind that going that way at all. All right, another rose right here. Yep, happy. And a little bit of my Dusty Miller, so I have my nice gray color. I think I'll tuck that into the back. And I think I want some in the front. <laughs> I always amaze myself that I can arrange backwards. I think this is gorgeous. What do you think of those colors? You love it? Yeah. So the contrast here of the foliage being nice and dark. Remember, we're adding black to something. So there's black added to the branches. We've added gray in this foliage and, of course, in the erygium. And then we've added white to the, um, to the, the blue in the Tweedia and to, of course, the beautiful pastel roses. And so that is arranging in an armature that was made from sticks. And also that tape against that low container is what allowed me to make this. I hope you love it because I, I think it's yummy. I think it's really, really pretty. I'm happy with that. I have something for you that I had never seen before. And um, I was at a program in uh, Florida and Derek um, Woodruff was there and he works with Smithers always no, he works with Syndicate Sales. And I gotta tell you what, he, he was showcasing this product and I think George was that. Okay, so here's an arrangement that I made in the cinch base. I love banding, so I just added a little bit. I think it was a yard and a half of this wire, so it has a little bit of interest on that collar. But look at these colors. So here we have analogous color harmony. So I'm taking that orange and I'm going to the red side on the color wheel. Analogous is usually three to four, but three technically, uh, colors beside each other on the color wheel. And so, and in its truest sense, it should contain a primary. So my primary is red, red, orange, and orange. Look at this bouquet. All right, so here's what I wanna show you. Oh, I think it's so darn clever. 
I arranged this in, it's like a hair comb that lays on top of each other like that, two pieces, forks going this way and forks going that way. Now look what happens. I was totally arranged in that and then I just pull it out. Look at this. I'm just pulling it out. That's it. How cool is that? Isn't that a fun thing? So that is called DIY floral grid. You've seen it already. I mean, good, but I was really excited because I had never seen this before. How easy is that? Because I, I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time pre-greening containers and doing all of that. I don't want to do anything like that. I just want to arrange flowers and add foliage last. That's almost always the way I arrange flowers first, foliage last. So my foliage last was a little bit of eucalyptus and three stems of um, plumosa. So I hope you find that really fun. So here's the way it works. Uh, mm -mm, first time using it was today. See? So after you've done arranging in this grid, you just pull this one out and pull this one off. And then, look, it's fabulous. You love it? I love new things, and especially things. Yeah? Um, Did you have a question? Liz was asking, yeah, Liz was asking what roses you're using, but I think this was back to the one you had just done before that, the little low bowl. Variety name? I don't know the variety name and it wasn't on the package. So I'm sorry about that. I want to say it's Tiffany, but I don't know. I, 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 like, I like things to be uh, known. So I'm sorry that I don't know the variety of that. Um, the spray roses, they weren't labeled either. So I get my flowers from Fall River Florist Supply in, um, Massachusetts, they're close to the Rhode Island um, border and they deliver, they have fabulous flowers. They're a wonderful company. And the reason why I buy from Fall River Florist Supply is because they, um, they clean their buckets between use. I've never seen a wholesale house do that. Clean them and dry them. They have a whole rack where they dry the buckets. I mean, I'm, I'm all about that. I love care and handling like that. And so I hope you like this. The DIY floral grid, I Googled it and I could find it to buy. I don't know if your wholesale houses are carrying these, but I would think this is going to be a fabulous tool for you to use. Just don't forget to take them out so you can have these for, for your use. Okay, so that is got, analogous color harmony to um, we've got more questions, orange. Anne. Yeah. So I think you just answered the one that just came in. Sandy was asking where you got that floral grid, but you just... Googled that and bought that online or local? You can. Well, I didn't know if Derek, Derek was going to be able to get one to me, but he shipped one to me. It came in yesterday. And so I was going to buy one. He goes, oh, no, no, I'll send it to you. But the floor house, sale house may have it. I believe it's a syndicate sales product. And I just think for you to train staff to arrange flowers that way and then just be able to take that thing right out. I just think it's a time saver. And it, not only is it a time saver, it's a greens saver. Because if we have to use all that foliage just to give us a mechanic to hold up our flowers, you know, we're spending a lot of, of our customers' money on, um, on something that ne they don't necessarily want. They, they ordered flowers. And so right. it's a great way to give your customers more flowers. So try online. It came right up for me. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. And we've got I another like question. Floral grid. Yep. Um, and then Veronica was asking if you can please say again how to you how to grid with the or use the color wheel. Well, use the color wheel. That's one of my favorite yeah. topics. So you get the color wheel, and uh, gosh, to go through this whole thing would be a, a class in itself. Which, if you just message Janet that you'd like a color workshop, she'll e either lead you to one that we've already done, and it's sitting in FTD University, because understanding the color wheel is so important. I think that when color is used right, there's this new sophistication that's added to your design. Personally, I like monochromatic arrangements and analogous close on the color wheel. Those are always going to be my favorites. I don't like polychromatic arrangements all jumping all over the color wheel, unless it's a child's birthday party or something that maybe is a country wedding or something like that. Maybe I'd go all over the color wheel, but I tend to like a sophisticated color harmony. And the way to use that is to understand this wheel. And so when you look at the color wheel, 
and just look at this side, it's going to point to a color. And my focus this week was orange, although I've kind of jumped all over the place. But here's orange. So here's you're seeing the tints, tones, and shades of that color, making that monochromatic, mono one chromatic color, one color, tints, tones, and shades of one color. Add black, add gray, add white. Then the one that I did, this little one that's probably going to be my favorite thing that I made today. Love this thing. Do you love it too? Hope so. Went across on the color wheel and found blue. La, la, la. And it tells you right in the middle of the color wheel for a compliment. Go across on the color wheel. Blue, orange, beautiful. This is in the orange family, probably closer to burgundy, but we'll, we'll go with it. So this is a complementary color harmony. And then another complementary color harmony. I will show you. I have this stem. I just got this vase. These are the kind of vases I collect, these foreign vases. I can usually find them pretty economical, but I love arranging flowers in these vases. So here I have another complementary color harmony. Green, go across from the color wheel on green, and you're going to find red. So this flower is a complementary color harmony in itself. It's a very shaded red, almost a blood red or a burgundy red. And then I added more of the Hercura foliage. And then, of course, I had to find the branches that were red. So it looks more a complementary color harmony from green across the color wheel, find red, and find beautiful foliages that have red values to them and branches that have red values to them. And then you get that sophistication. Analogous, the big one. Tints, tones, and shades of reds and all the way to orange, reds and red orange. So here's three colors beside on the color wheel, making that analogous. I have one coming up where I'm going to go this the other way, this way on the color wheel. Yeah. But it's pretty self explanatory right here. Janet, we might already have something on FTD University, and maybe you can post that if we do. I don't know if we have the color wheel. Liz was asking who makes that color wheel you're using. I don't know if you know, but I know for when we had boot camp, we would just order, I would just go down to the local art store, and they have tons of them that you can buy yeah. in varying yeah. sizes. Michaels would have them. You can order them online. Uh, is it Dick Blick? Dick Blick's Art Supplies? Yeah. I got a lot of them from them as well. Uh, so if you're ordering a lot, I would suggest finding them online. Uh, Dick Blick would sell probably, you know, a dozen of them to you because uh, if you need them for talking to brides, I never talk to brides or party people without one of these because it helped them to understand what color can do when it's arranged properly. Do you love analogous, right? So it's all just blending in and speaking to another one another. Again, groupings are important to me. That was my style. And I like the loose, loosey look. Loose, loose, loose. And I love that new grid. Leah confirmed that that grid is definitely by Syndicate Sales and she was told to ask their wholesalers to order from Syndicate Sales. Oh, okay. Okay, going back to my for going back to my foraging. Any questions? You guys are great. I love questions. Going back to my foraging, this is uh, viburnum, and I love this container. So this is from FTD Marketplace as well. It has the gold again. Banding is my signature look. So I just wrapped a little bit of the lace around it. I love that cottage core look. And anytime I can add a little texture, and if it's fabric, I'm even happier. Uh, one of the glues that I use quite frequently is Fabri-Tec. Uh, my glues are going to be uh, different glues than you might keep on your design bench. I keep on mine, maybe. Um, one of my favorite glues is Art Glitter Glue, and it comes in, uh, it has this wonderful look, how little glue you could get at a time. So I use this when I make really fine little things, sticks to paper beautifully, sticks to ribbon really nicely. Another glue that's always on my design bench too is some kind of a, a fabric fix or a liquid stitch because I use a lot, I use a lot of fabric and I use a lot of ribbon. I love textural things. And so these are things that are on my design bench for me to use every day 
I do use these every day. This glue they won't ship to you in the winter. It's just something about when this gets cold, it just really goes bad. So you need to get it in the fall. But I love this glue, art glitter glue. I just get it online. Fabric fix or any of those, you can just get probably that you have it anywhere, Walmart, wherever. Another one. Now the glue that's on my bench is this one, E6000, glass to glass. If I wanted to add glass beads to this, if I wanted to use metal to metal or metal to glass, because I use a lot, I use a lot of uh, vintage jewelry. And that's all kinds of things. This is my favorite glue for that. It's E6000. It dries pretty quickly, but if I were going to add, say, a brooch to this, and I added, used um, the E6000 and added a brooch, then maybe I would use some painter's tape to put across it till that glue dried and then add a beautiful brooch to that. That sounds like something I would do. Love the vintage. I'm so in tune to that too. So there's the grand millennial, right? So that's the look where the millennials like what their grandmothers had. Now that's probably me, right? So um, it's, wonder it's wonderful. They're finding an appreciation for old things because old things are made so well, right? All right, so this is viburnum. All I did was clean it up a little bit and then pop it in the vase like this. And because of its gnarly nature, what did it do for me? It already made a grid. So rather than me put some type of apparatus on the top of this or use my new handy dandy um, DIY floral grid, the branches did it for me. So there we go in this nice tall vase. The choice of vase is really important. And I think for this one, I'm gonna suggest this is probably gonna house between 18 and 24 stems. That's important to know. The size of the opening is gonna warrant how many stems you're gonna get in there. Now, if you're a heavy foliage placer, right? Lots and lots and lots of greens, then maybe it's a little less. But with an opening that's about, this is three and a half inches about, I know I'm gonna pull 18 to 24 stems of flowers to complete this space. My mechanics are fast. I'm not taping a grid on this. I'm just taking this foliage that I got right across the street in front of my house and popping it down in there. And the gnarly nature of these branches is all I want to arrange these flowers. All right. So here's another analogous color harmony. So this is orange going over to yellow. Yeah, it's great summer colors, right? They're citrusy and they feel great. So let's see if I can arrange this right in. My sticks. So I'm gonna start off with these spray roses. And if anybody does know the name of that rose, if Tiffany sounds right, um, mention it to Janet. I think that's what it is. How's my mechanics? I'm not fooling around, I'm not shuffling anything, am I? Everything is staying exactly where I want it to stay. The base helps too, right? My choice of this base helps because um, it's tall and linear. I also, uh, if anybody knows BJ Dyer, he has what's called a constitution for his designers. And one of the things in his constitution is all stems have to hit the bottom of the base. So if you think you're just lily dipping, you'd never work the BJ. So this goes where the stem all the way touches the bottom of the vase. He wants to ensure that you're gonna have wonderful longevity. And the way to do that is to make sure the flowers have a great water source. If the client forgets to add water or, um, the, or, uh, or it spills in the, in the van, this flower stem, I'll never forget it as long as I live, goes all the way to the bottom of the vase. Here's my great big giant hypericum. I love adding texture. Hypericum is a wonderful way to do that. Okay, so, so far it's what? It's still monochromatic, isn't it? It's still orange. I've got to, if it's going to be analogous, it's got to be analogous, I've got to add yellow. Look, 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 look. look. And we think the rose is Tiffany Rose, possible shimmer rose. Simmer? Shimmer. Shimmer, did you yeah. say? 
shimmer. Oh, okay. Like shimmer. shiny All right. shimmer. Shiny shimmer. Could be. Ranunculus, my sweet little ranunculus. It's an orangey, it's an orangey yellow. It looks pretty from the front. It looks good from on my side. How's it look, Janet? It looks beautiful. I love it. I do you love these colors. And again, freesia. Wow. It smells so yum, yum, yummy. I love these little gnarly stems that just do as they please and go where they want. I just want to make sure that I'm going to use those too. So this color harmony arranged just in, oh man, a little handful of roadsidea. Um, easy, easy, easy. And we're not spending a lot of time adding uh, tape or armatures. I'm just, again, my signature look, arranging in sticks. Okay. Let's see from back here. Let me get it in there nice and tight. Yeah, it's nice and tight. My mechanics are good, aren't they? What do you think? Can you arrange just in sticks? Yes, you can. I think it's beautiful. I love the texture of, of everything in here. So there you go. All right. So one more trick. Do I have time for another one, Janet? Quick one. Quick one. No promises. Okay. All right. So here's the mechanics. It's super fun. And I love this style. I love doing this. This is a container from Smithers Oasis. Uh, this is an inert. It'll break down. It's by our degradable container. And I have the wire, uh, this wire. I've used this wire for my mechanic. I love this stuff. You can use chicken wire too. And if you're going to show your chicken wire, just spray paint it black, spray paint it bright green, spray paint it something. And so what I've done, because I always loved this, but it always felt like customers were going to prick themselves on this. So what I did was I took duct tape. Well, Joe, you use a lot of duct tape. So I took duct tape and I folded it over, pulled it out, laid it on top and then folded the duct tape over the little sharp prickly parts like that. And then look at the cool look I got, right? Also for another great mechanic, how about using the duct tape to cover these water tubes? So I took some of the cymbidium orchids. Here's the water tube. Well, I needed to add this really cool duct tape again, somewhere in the arrangement. So I just covered the water tubes with my duct tape and they can just pop in there anywhere. Look how fun they are. And so this is just the wonderful wire from Smithers Oasis. I think this comes in gold too. And here I'm using the silver. And here's how, um, but it's going to work. This is uh, probably crab apple, I guess. And so let's see, let's check my mechanics. If I put this branch in here, will it stay? Look at that, right? Is that great mechanics? How cool this is. I love the funkiness of this, right? I like arranging kind of natural, but every once in a while, you gotta get your funk on, right? So, there's another piece of this wonderful mushroom. I'm just going to tuck it down there as a prop. Oh, can you see it? Good mechanics. Not that branch is just there just beautifully. And so now I can start adding flowers. Check the mechanics of this, right? Look at that. It's just staying. So I'll just play around with this. And I want to ask for more questions too. Well, I'm going to finish this little guy. I'm so glad you joined today. I know it's summertime. And we probably all want to get someplace near water or do something fun and summery. But education is so, so, so important. And again, I want to thank Janet and everybody at AI, excuse me, FTD for making sure that education is just always there for us and offering these types of, of um, workshops. Um, if you get an FTD order, and you can't fill it because you don't have the flowers. 
Can I tell you what I always did in my F, my a, my FTD shop is I, I always rejected the orders, but I would tell them what I could do. You want to always put yourself in the shoes of the client, the one that's sending the flowers. Would they be disappointed with substitutions that they didn't know about? So if I couldn't fill it the way that I was supposed to, I would reject it. But I would say, but this is what I can do. Give that, give FTD an opportunity to send it to a florist that might be able to fill it the way the customer wants it. But also that order might come back to you. Um, and that's always a good thing, right? I gotta tell you, money is made or lost on the design bench. One of the best things I think that FTD has ever done is they've come up with a, a bouquet for you and it's called um, the labor saver bouquets. I think Janet, put a link uh, somewhere um, somewhere on your screen. I don't know, we'll ask you. Yeah. And I'm gonna hand it out so I can download they're, it. They're, they're wonderful bouquets and they're already hand tied for you. All you have to do is, is recut them, put them in water that you've already add floral life to, and then just give them a little bit of a finesse. And I gotta tell you what, I don't know about you, but there is such a labor shortage here in New England that if I had a flower shop now, I would definitely be buying those. So make sure you check those out because if you just have people in the, uh, your flower shop that maybe they're not designers, they're flower arrangers, they don't know the elements and principles of design, they're in training, there's nothing wrong with having a whole team of people like that that can get boxes of flowers that all they have to do is recut the stems and get them hydrated in a vase and out they go. That's how beautiful these are. Wait till you see them. So make sure you go to, um, to um, it's, it's FX, what's that? Flower exchange, flower exchange, and take a peek at those. So I want to go back to color and uh, when you're working with receiving an FTD order and it has really bright, be beautiful colors. Remember, if you can't replace them, at least replace a line flower for a line flower, a filler flower for a filler flower, and a mass flower for a mass flower, a form flower for a form flower. And not only just within the color range, but also the size of that bloom too. So would you say that a Gerber daisy with a dark center could re be replaced with a sunflower with a dark center? See how sensible that is? And so if you're unclear, on what to do with substitutions for any FTD orders, just go to FTDI and you can pull up the substitution list and how to handle that. But we just really want this industry to be as strong and wonderful as it, as it can be. And the way we handle things professionally, and that's a big part of it, is the way we handle um, our FTD orders and make sure that the sender is happy. The recipient's not gonna really know what the sender had in mind or what they were looking for at a website. We wanna please that sender as well. It's part of our professionalism. We don't wanna have complaints. And so handle them that way. That's just the way that I did it in my flower shop. And, it, and I kept a good relationship with FTD that way by handling things. If I could help them, I would. But when I knew I couldn't please the customer, I didn't try to, right? Tell them what you can do. I just love this already, right? Blue and purple. If I have time, I'm gonna keep going, Janet. <laughs> I love this. See this hydrangea? I can arrange right in that. The hydrangea itself is what? An armature, right? It has all those beautiful broken uh, bracts, not broken bracts, has the bracts that are going to hold the flowers so beautifully. And Lysianthus is one of my favorite flowers. It looks so fragile, but man, it does last when it's treated properly. I love good care and handling. Here you come. Another flower that I adore is carnations. Love them. Love the colors that they come in. When we're buying them, we're going to ask for these. This is Antiqua, I believe. I love these little dirty looking ones. And, uh, oh, and they smell so good too. They're so economical. And they last and last and last. These, I'm just going to cut a whole bunch at once. Where is that? I don't know. Brazilian Samic. 
he said, you, you spending too much time arranging one flower at a time. Chop a whole bunch of those off and arrange them. And he's right. Why would I just cut one flower at a time when I can um, put a whole bunch at once? So what do you think? I can't see it from that side. I think he needs more listening on this. Or stock. So how about these mechanics, huh? Right from that first branch that I put in there, these flowers are staying exactly where I want them. I think it's beautiful. Can I add orange? No. I'm going to keep it just like this. Here's that foliage from the wedding last weekend. I didn't throw the sticks away. You know how the eucalyptus gets dry? On this side is green, on this side is red. So you know on this side, I think I'll use the green side. Must be the way the sun shoots it, huh? And there. Hmm. Well, from back here, it looks pretty. I hope it looks pretty from this side too. <laughs> Any more questions, Janet? Um, we've got one more question. Um, Joanna was asking how you become AIFD certified without going to a formal institute. Without going to what? A formal? Formal institute. A formal what? Institute. A formal institute. I, yeah. I didn't go to a formal institute. So I did a lot of self-study. There is a lot you can learn online. Um, you can take mock tests too. Um, a lot of institutes will, will give you a mock test if you wanna do that first, but I was self-study. And uh, a friend of mine suggested that I become a member of AIFD, thought I had what it took. And I studied a lot. And uh, back then AIFD had a very simple little book. It was, oh gosh, maybe just a hundred pages. I, I pretty much memorized that. And so then I tested for AIFD. And I don't know that you got to be pretty thick skinned to do that, but um, I got in uh, the first time I tested, but I took it very seriously. And I took a lot of classes. I took classes from Renee Van Rems, Greg Lursch. I took classes from uh, who else was around back then? Larry, Lynn Larry McLean, um, Tommy. Tumi Ferris, oh my gosh, so many wonderful designers. When I suggested that uh, that was a goal, they they would take me under their wing and make sure that I was um, was studying and I would send them pictures. That was back when you just didn't send it on your cell phone either because I mean, that was what, in nine, I became a member in 97. And that's when we had to send in pictures, actual photographs of our work. And so, Grab a member. We all want you. We, we want you involved with us because we're really cool. And so we want you with us. But um, find a member that's close by and ask for some, some tutoring. Um, we, all, we all want to grow the industry with such professionalism in design. And we want work that looks like this. We want it to look like a designer had their hands in here, right? I have full appreciation for the flower arrangers. I was a flower arranger for many, many years and I made good money doing it. But when I wanted to become a professional, I wanted to be a professional floral designer, I knew there was a path for me. And that was back when AI, excuse me, FTD had a master program too, I took that first. Any, any education that was out there, and there's so much now online. If you go to the FTD University, there is so much there for you. There is a clinic, I think I did it last year for you, Janet. It was the techniques. No, 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 mechan yeah, techniques, it was techniques. And it was techniques one and techniques two, lots there for you. So sit down and watch the university. They're not that long. Some of them are like 45 minutes. They might be up to an hour. Usually with me, I go overboard, I go too too long, but um, if you're interested, I just keep talking, but yeah, please um, reach out to me, uh, reach out to any member of AIFD, we'll get you right where you need to go. All any right. more questions? I've made a mess Thanks. in my living room, I can promise you that. Um, I don't see anything for now, while we're waiting, if there's any final questions, definitely type them in the question box, um, and then a reminder, 
um, that you can download the current FC Flower Exchange order form for those Labor Saver bouquets that are available. Those are available to purchase all year long. That's in that handout section on the upper right side of your screen. Pricing is on there. It's current for August. Um, so you're welcome to do that. And I don't see any final questions. So yeah, and we're okay. at an hour. So you're right, Anne. You always have lots of, uh, of great uh, information and tips to share. So I've gotten some thank yous on all the information you've shared. So um, good, good, good. So let me just go back this one. And that it's analogous. So it's lavender to blue. Here we are on the color wheel. I used the cool colors. I stretched it, didn't I? Went all the way over to green. So it's called an extended analogous. So get your color wheel and study it. And um, I think analogous arrangements are super sophisticated. Cool. Thanks, Anne. Thanks to everyone. You're welcome. For Thanks for having yeah. me, Janet. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, the recording for everybody, the recording will be available on demand on the FTD Mercury Network Flourish YouTube channel. And for more education programming from FTD, visit ftdi.com to register for those upcoming free webinars and design shows, as well as viewing past education programs on demand at your, um, at your uh, leisure. And we have one final question came in from Amy. Can you enter a design show without certification? Enter a show, a design show. If you're talking about a design show that's maybe uh, from uh, a, a wholesale house that's having it, or maybe a state forest association, you you just you just get there. You just get there and sit in the front row. That's what you do. And I don't know anyone, Janet. You would know. You know all the state forest associations. Anybody that would refu refuse anybody that wanted to learn our industry. So. I want to say, you know, get out there and get out there as much as you can. Anybody from Texas, I'll be there next weekend. I'm excited about that. Where am I going, Janet? Where in Texas? Lubbock, going, Texas. Lubbock, Lubbock Texas. Yep. Yep. West Texas, New Mexico Florist Association Convention. So, all right. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon. We'll hope to see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you.